Star Wars 7x7 episode 1805. Today, we're comparing Cal Kestis from Jedi Fallen Order and Kanan Jarrus from Star Wars Rebels, looking at seven ways that they are very similar and five ways that they are different. Let's go! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. And here's where we're going to begin. Back at Celebration Chicago, when they revealed the trailer for Jedi Fallen Order, I made the comment even back then, there was a scene in there that was very similar to a scene that played out in the novel A New Dawn by John Jackson Miller, which was about how Hera Syndulla and Kanan Jarrus from Star Wars Rebels first met each other. It was a prequel of sorts to Star Wars Rebels, and it was the first novel released in the new canon. Well, it turns out that now that we know a lot more about Jedi Fallen Order, thanks to the reveals from the E3 Entertainment Expo and also from the Game Informer magazine cover story on the subject, well, it does seem like they have rather a lot in common, but there are some significant differences as well. So today we are going to run down the seven things that are very similar in the backstories of Kanan Jarrus and Cal Kestis and also five ways that they are different. Let's start out with the most obvious one, which is that they are Padawans who survived Order 66, okay? You know, <laughs> that much we know right from the get-go. A second way that they're similar is that they took what would be considered in our galaxy blue-collar jobs for all intents and purposes in order to stay hidden and survive. Cal Kestis, when we meet him, is part of the Scrapper Guild working to tear apart old Clone Wars ships to sell for scrap. And Kanan, when we first meet him, and this was back in A New Dawn, right? You know, not the comic series, but in A New Dawn he has already been a bounty hunter and a bartender and a freighter pilot and all sorts of other you know, odd job situations that are definitely not meant for him to call attention to himself or rise through any sort of corporate hierarchy, if you will. A third thing that comes up is that they're discovered by the Empire when they do something to help someone and use their force powers to do it. Now, granted, we don't know for sure what that is as far as Cal Kestis goes, but it's been very strongly hinted at in that initial trailer that was revealed at Celebration Chicago, where somebody working on a ship with him appears to be falling to their death, and it looks like he is reaching out to use the Force to save that person. In a similar way, Kanan Jarrus uses the Force to help someone as well, and that is ultimately what leads to attention being paid to him that he doesn't want paid to him at all. And... <laughs> Yeah, there you go. That's three. And then a fourth way that they are similar is that these are sort of inciting incidents for us as we get to know these two characters. The fact that they are trying to keep their heads down and just survive without drawing attention to themselves and the fact that they unfortunately expose themselves, they end up having to go on the run. And so that is your fourth thing that part of their adventure is that they have this inciting incident that sends them on the run, and so now they have to figure out how to survive now that their Jedi secret has been exposed. A fifth thing that is similar for both of them is that they end up hooking up with a rebel cell. In the case of Kanan Jarrus, it's of course with Hera Syndulla and Ezra Bridger and Zeb Aurelios and Chopper and Sabine Wren. So yeah, that's their cell, which we of course meet and get to know better in Star Wars Rebels. As for Cal Kestis, well, one of the things that is also a sixth thing that's similar, I guess, is that the rebel cell that he hooks up with happens to be run by Saw Gerrera. And so, yeah, there you go. That's the rebel cell. And the sixth thing they have in common is that they are having run-ins and working with Saw Gerrera at one time or another. And there is a seventh thing as well, and that is that they end up freeing Wookiee slaves. This happens in the very beginning of Star Wars Rebels, actually, where Kanan and the rest of the Ghost crew end up freeing some Wookiees that are being taken to Kessel to work as slaves, so tie into Solo a Star Wars story ahead of the fact. And in the gameplay footage that was just released from Jedi Fallen Order, Cal is on Kashyyyk to free Wookiees as well. So after the break, we're going to talk about five ways that their backstories actually differ from each other. Hey Rebel Rouser. 
If you've got a business that needs to reach a dedicated audience of Star Wars fans, or you know somebody who does, then you might want to reach out to me. <laughs> I've got a show that reaches thousands of people between the audio version, the video version, and our social media channels, and I'd love to find out how I can help you with your business ventures, too. Just reach out at sw7x7.com slash sponsors. That's plural, S-P-O-N-S-O-R-S. That's sw7x7.com slash sponsors, and let's see how we can work together. Welcome back. All right, let's talk about the ways that Cal and Kanan are different from each other, at least in their backstories, in things that we know about, what's happened to them, that sort of thing. We'll start off with the lightsaber situation. So Kanan, of course, has his own lightsaber, but we find out this is actually Cal's master's lightsaber that he's using, not necessarily his. We don't know who his master is yet, but I guess the thing that we talked about yesterday about lightsaber colors and being able to customize that, well, maybe there's something to that with Cal being able to construct his own lightsaber, assuming he had one in the first place, but obviously must have lost it at some point. Anyway, so that might explain why you would be able to get a different color for your blade playing as Cal Custis, but yeah, that's a, a side note to be sure. Another thing that seems obvious, but can't really confirm is the age difference between Cal Kestis and Kanan Jarrus. So Kanan was 14 years old at the advent of Order 66, and the story for Jedi Fallen Order is supposed to take place not long after the events of Order 66, and Cal seems like he is significantly older than that. The actor who is playing him for the, vo uh, for the motion capture and whatnot and doing the voice, Cameron Monaghan, is 25 years old in real life. So, you know, he certainly looks like he could pull off Teenager, but uh, I don't think he can carry off 14-year-old necessarily, so... A third difference has to do with Padawan and mentor situations. So Kanan eventually takes on a Padawan of his own, whereas Cal, as far as we know from Jedi Fallen Order so far, does not take on a Padawan. In fact, he just becomes a Padawan again, this time to another former Jedi Knight. So that again is a little bit different. One thing that at this point we don't know whether it's different or not, but it certainly is a possibility it could be the same, is the name situation. So Kanan Jarrus is, of course, not Kanan's real name. Caleb Doom was his real name, and he took on the assumed name of Kanan Jarrus in order to stay hidden from the Empire as part of his deep undercover disguise. Cal Kestis? Well, we don't know if that's his real name or if it is another assumed name, and that obviously could lead to some of the drama and intrigue surrounding who he actually is and who his master might have been. That's stuff that's going to be revealed to us. And the last thing that's different is more of a function of the fact that we got to spend a number of years with Kanan Jarrus and we've barely spent any time with Cal so far, but Kanan progressed in his Jedi journey as he sort of reclaimed ownership of his Jedi nature. He eventually became a Jedi Knight and was knighted as such. Whereas Cal, well, all we know at this point is that the former Jedi Knight, Siri, is supposed to be, or Seer, excuse me, is supposed to be training him in his Force powers, and you know that could mean that he could become a knight, but it doesn't sound like that's where his intentions are going, especially considering the reporting that we've had about him being sort of doubtful about this whole restoring the Jedi Order business. You know, I've, that seems to be the new way that he's being presented to us. Previously at Celebration Chicago, he was presented more in the vein of wanting to restore the Jedi Order, so we'll have to see how this shakes out. I don't think Kanan was necessarily thinking about the whole Jedi Order himself, but certainly he progressed in his Jedi journey from a Padawan to a Knight, and Cal's journey is still very much up in the air. And that is going to do it for our look very quickly at the similarities and differences between Cal Kestis from Jedi Order, or Jedi Fallen Order, excuse me, and Kanan Jarrus from Star Wars Rebels. And that is going to do it for this show as well today. Thank you so much once again for joining me for it as always. And may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. 
podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.